How to get over a breakup. In this video, I'm gonna share my best tips for moving on after a breakup. It's Sabrina, your personal love advisor from A New Mode, the channel where we show you how love actually works. First, I wanna say, I know how alone you feel. I know how much pain you're in. I know how isolating it feels. Breakups are extremely isolating experiences. You feel just boxed in by the pain and you can't see beyond that. It feels like there is gonna be no light at the end of the tunnel and you are just always gonna feel this way. It feels like this pain is yours and yours alone and no one could possibly understand what it's like. But I understand, I have been through the depths of it, through the gut-wrenching, soul-crushing, dark, twisted depths of it. And I have climbed my way out and I have helped many others do the same. And I'm gonna share everything with you. So make sure you watch this video all the way until the end. Real quick, if you find this video helpful, please give it a like. If you like my channel, you like my content, please subscribe, ring the bell to turn on notifications, share this video with any of your friends who are going through a breakup right now, and please leave me a comment with your questions and feedback and let me know what you think. Before I share my tips for how to move on after a breakup, I'm gonna share with you how I used to handle breakups in my youth. I used to obsess endlessly and replay every detail of the relationship over and over in my mind and go over exactly what I would have done differently in each and every situation and drive myself nuts. When that was finished, I would completely numb myself out. I would be going, 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 filling myself with endless distractions so I wouldn't have to face the enormous pain I was in. But pain doesn't go away just because it goes unacknowledged. I took it all way too personally, and that ended up bleeding into all the relationships that came after. I let a lot of faulty beliefs about myself get wired into my psyche, and it took years to undo that damage. Don't be like me. They say time heals, but that's not totally true. Time doesn't do all the work for you. It's an active process. You need to actively work on moving on and work with time. You can't let time just tug you right along and then eventually you get to this magical place where, oh, I'm over it and yeah, uh, there's no scars left behind from that relationship. It doesn't work that way. You need to process, you need to grieve, you need to feel, you need to heal, you need to build yourself back up again. Then time will help you move along. You need to get in touch with your inner strength so that you come out of this even better and stronger than ever. Okay, now let's talk about how to do that. Number one, accept the situation for what it is. The fact that you're watching this video means you've probably already achieved this step, because if not, you'd be watching my video on how to get your ex back. You're here because you wanna know how to move on, because you've accepted that this relationship is over and now's the time to move on. You have to give this some time and space. You have to truly establish that it is over. So don't contact him, do not beg him to take you back because that will just shred any last layer of dignity you have left. Don't look for closure, don't look for answers, don't don't look for his friendship, don't look for anything. You need complete space right now to work things out internally. And we're gonna go over exactly how to do that throughout this video. You need to accept this new reality and accept that he's not in it. Number two, don't take it personally. I'm assuming that this, this guy broke up with you and that's why you're here. And it's very hard not to take that personally. It's very hard not to feel like I just wasn't enough. I wasn't good enough. What did I do wrong? What could I have done differently? It feels like you just weren't enough as you are. Like you should have been some other way and then maybe this relationship would have worked out. This is not a healthy way to think about things and it's also just not the truth. Sometimes the timing isn't right. Sometimes two people are great individually, but they're just not so great together. Not everyone's a match. Everyone has different things that they want and need in a partner. And the things that maybe this guy felt like, okay, I don't really like that she's this way, another guy is gonna feel like, I love that she's this way. This is what I love most about her. So it's not personal. Don't beat yourself up and think that you're not good enough because that's just not the truth. Maybe you weren't right for him, but that doesn't mean that you're not good enough to have the love that you want. And you will find that with someone else. It just means that he wasn't the right match for you. Number three, feel your feelings. Now this can be the hard part and a lot of people just skip this step because they do what I used to do, which is just completely numb out and fill themselves with distractions so that they don't have to think about anything. You have to feel your feelings. Like I said, pain doesn't go away because it goes unacknowledged. Don't bury it, don't hide from it, don't numb yourself out. You have to face the pain and breakups are painful. At best, breakups are a little bit sad. At worst, they're downright traumatic. Either way, they leave a lot of painful feelings that you need to experience. Because if you don't, they're just gonna stay in there and they're just gonna circle through your being because they're not just gonna evaporate. It doesn't work that way. In the beginning, I'm sure you had visions of where this relationship would go and things didn't turn out the way that you wanted them to. And that's sad. That's really sad. It's really devastating. And you need to grieve. 
Because a breakup really does feel like a death. It's the death of the potential of what could have been. And also, this is a person that was so firmly entrenched in your life. You spent so much time together and now they're just gone. I mean, it almost feels like you amputated a limb or lost a vital organ. It's so hard when that person isn't there anymore and that's sad. Be gentle with yourself. Let yourself cry. Let yourself feel sad. Let yourself mourn the loss because it is, it's a great loss. Even if you recognize that this relationship wasn't the right relationship for you, it's still still a very painful loss, but life must go on eventually. So you have to give yourself a limit to how long you allow yourself to wallow. And I wouldn't even say wallow. You're not wallowing in the misery. You're processing. You're processing and working on moving on. I would say give yourself maybe a week tops and then the show must go on. After that, then you can keep yourself busy. Then it's time to get yourself out there to start dating to, well, actually you're not going to start dating until we do an inventory, which we're going to talk about later in this video. Then it's time to just keep yourself busy, pursue new passion learn new things, learn a new language, learn how to cook, learn how to sew. Just try something new because that's really important. This is going to help you learn more about yourself. And it's also just going to keep you busy and it's going to help you find a passion and a purpose. And these are all amazing things. And these are the building blocks of self-esteem. Number four, write him a letter that you don't send. Now this was my favorite tool and this really was enormously helpful for me. It might feel pointless to write him a letter that you don't plan on sending, but you'd be amazed at what can come out of you and how good it can feel because a lot of us get stuck in the cycle of thinking of the things that we wish we had said to him. And even if you do have those closure talks with him, it's never sat fully satisfying. There's always things that are left unsaid. After a breakup, your emotions will start spiraling all over the place. Rage, anger, sadness, despair, feelings of nostalgia and yearning for the good times. And all of these emotions can circle through you within the span of like 30 minutes. You're all over the place. So you need an outlet to get that out. Whether you're feeling really angry at him and want to let him have it, or whether you're feeling nostalgic and you're reminiscing about the good times, write it all down in a letter that you don't send to him. And if that feels a little odd to you, maybe just journal. You would be so surprised at what can spill out of you when you just let it all out. Just sit down, let your feelings out and see what comes out of you. Number five, do a self check. Everything that happens to us in life, especially the bad things, has the ability to either tear us down or take us to a higher place. Breakups are an enormous opportunity for growth. It's really a big opportunity to work on yourself, to develop yourself, to build yourself up. Or it can also be an opportunity for you to completely ravage your self-esteem and allow all these faulty beliefs about yourself to be ingrained inside you. And we don't want that. Use this as an opportunity to come out even better than you were before. And this means you need to ask yourself some questions so that you can get to a healthy place for your next relationship. Here's some questions that you should ask yourself. What did I learn from this relationship that I can use in my next relationship? What did I do in this relationship that I'll never do again in a relationship? What qualities do I truly need in a partner? Now, some of these can be qualities that your ex possessed. Some, thing, some of them might be things that you know your ex didn't possess. So really think about you know what it is you actually need in a partner. Why did I stay even though the relationship wasn't working? Why do I feel so stuck on him and unable to move on? What did I learn about myself through my time with him? Now, for these questions, you can either talk it out with a friend or a family member or just write it out and think about it on your own, but really spend time on this. Number six, get excited for your next relationship. Now that you've taken the time to process and grieve and work on yourself and get to a better place, it's time to be excited about the future. It's time to be excited to use everything you've learned in your next relationship so that this one is hopefully the one that lasts. I know how daunting it can feel to dive back into the dating pool. I know that you're just thinking about how annoying and difficult dating is, but try not to focus on that part. Try to focus about the exciting parts of a new relationship because it is so exciting. The beginning is such a magical time. Think about how exciting it is to share that first kiss or the first I love you or even when he says that you're his official girlfriend or when you go on your first trip together. Think about all the exciting things because a new relationship is super exciting. So focus on that part of it, not the part about, oh, I have to go on so many dates and start over with someone new and learn about someone new and learn his likes and dislikes and oh, I don't want to start all over again. I just want to go back to what's familiar and what's comfortable. Think about how amazing it'll be to be with a man who truly appreciates you in a way that your ex couldn't. A man who really sees you and really loves you for exactly who you are. Think about those parts of it. And I know it feels like you're never going to find that, but believe me, you will. He's out there. You just have to have faith and be positive because being negative just doesn't really do anything for you. It's just going to keep you stuck in a depressed, miserable spiral. Finding the right guy entails two things. First, you have to make yourself a vessel to receive love. See, a lot of people aren't going to tell you about this step. Instead, if you watch other videos from other dating experts about how to get over a breakup, they're going to say, oh, the best way to get over a guy is to get under another guy. No, 
First, you have to do the work. You have to make yourself a vessel to recognize the right guy when he comes along. Otherwise, you're just gonna stay stuck exactly where you were and history is just gonna keep repeating itself. So if you follow the advice I've given in this video, you do the work, you really look internally, you really work on building yourself back up, then that's making yourself a vessel to receive love. Step two is then putting yourself back out there and then using everything you've learned to have an amazing relationship. Trust me, I know how hard it is. I know it feels like you're never gonna get out of this, but you will, I swear you will. I hope that you found this video helpful. If so, please give it a like. Please leave a comment letting me know your best tips for getting over a breakup or something that you've done that you found helpful. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you never miss out on our videos and ring the bell to turn on notifications. Leave a comment letting me know what other topics you'd like me to cover and I will see you guys in the next video.